That looks alright, right? Yeah. Feel better now that you've got a booster seat. I'm only little. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Leanne and today I have a very, very special guest. Me! <laughs> I feel like I should give you your, your entire formal title. Okay. So, everybody, this is my lovely wife Helen. Lovely wife Helen, this is everybody. Hello everybody. <laughs> Helen is here because we heard you. We heard your comments. This is the content that you asked for. Anything that goes wrong from here on in is your fault. Well, probably my fault actually. <gasps> I can see domestics on the horizon already. <laughs> so to give this some... <laughs> So to give this some context, in my January tops and bottoms video I mentioned my read aloud book for the month and I just quickly reminded you guys because there were some people who were pretty new that every month I usually have a read aloud book because I read aloud to my lovely wife Helen while she is cooking and driving us places and generally keeping me alive and sustained as a human being. This is a good thing. Yes. So we decided, after your lovely comments, that we would pick a list of some of our favourite books that we've read together and we would talk to you about them. Because I, turns out, I quite like a list. And I usually like a list of ten. But we couldn't agree on a list of ten. So instead we've got a list of eight. That's what we're going with. That's the kind of booktuber I've become. We're doing lists of eight now. So we're going to start with what we kind of partially agree was our... I say. You, 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 you're I sure. Say, you well, say. that's the first I remember. Oh, we know how good my memory is. I didn't say it. <laughs> and this book might shock a few of you guys because I don't really read this kind of book very often and uh, neither did Helen when we initially picked it up. But this was a recommendation from the wonderful Angie <laughs> at Angieville, who I have known for a really, really long time, and she loved this book. So I was like, Do you know what? I'm just gonna give it a go. And that book is Unsticky by Sarah Manning. How unlike me a cover is this? There's none other. <laughs> no, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing anywhere. But we loved this, Indeed. didn't we? This yeah. was definitely a five star book, and I think. For reading aloud a book for the first time, this was quite freaking ambitious. This was really long. This was 562 pages, Bish. It's a chunk of 562 <laughs> pages. We generally, um, we generally don't, we try to read books that are about 300 pages because you would be shocked, you would be shocked at how long it can take to narrate just like 10 pages in yeah. a chapter. Um, so we, we try and make it so that we, we aren't dragging books across months and months and months. But some, sometimes, sometimes they end up being this long, it's usually my fault. So Unsticky is, it says on the back it's like Pretty Women for the 21st century, but Pretty Maybe. Women was shit. So... <laughs> it's gonna be houses. There are gonna be. Don't at me. I don't care. This is about Grace and she is what I think is like a fashion editorial uh, assistant, assistant so, yeah. Yeah. yeah and uh, she is living well beyond her means she is buying extremely expensive designer clothes to try and fit in at her job she's dating men that she doesn't really like to try and fit in with her friends and she is essentially running on hope and caffeine and she kind of hits rock bottom at the same time that she literally hits the other character in this book who is Vaughn. So Vaughn, I don't know if you have very fond memories of Vaughn but I, I have, I, I love Vaughn. So he is an art dealer and he... Mm, so here's a, here's a small rant. I don't... <laughs> you rant really? I, <laughs> I don't like the trope in romance fiction of the tortured man and the woman who just has to put up with him being an utter douche nugget because he's tortured and he has a horrible past. Mm. 
bad behaviour is bad behaviour no matter what kind of past that you have and if you're a horrible human being you don't deserve the kind of attention that romantic leads generally give. So Vaughn was a refreshing change. Vaughn is a little bit arrogant and he's very used to getting things when he wants to get things but he he's not he's not he's not a twat about it he's 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 a, a, a relatable human being yeah I related to Vaughn I understood that he had a crap life but that he was attempting to make it better so essentially Vaughn offers Grace a job as his companion we'll go with that we'll go with that it's hilarious though <laughs> it's really like it's acid wit and I, Sarah Manning doesn't actually write contemporary fiction anymore she writes um, sort of like post World War 2 okay. and uh, none of her other books have ever I've, we've, we've had a couple of her other books on our shelves but I think this is just Sarah Manning is just going to be one of those authors that we just we have that one book yeah. and we love it and we d that's okay exactly it's got a very special place in my heart this one yeah it made you feel quite uncomfortable in a few places though didn't it that's the one thing that we will say and not for not because Grace is a high class call girl without the intercourse part but because she spends money that she doesn't have yeah oh, I don't like that Really uncomfortable. One click buy on Amazon. It's no. my nemesis. No, think before buy. Not one click. Think. The next one is One for the Money by Janet Ivanovich. Well done. Oh, look at that showing off there. <laughs> it's about Stephanie Plum, who is a bounty hunter, and she's not the best bounty hunter in the world she's not very good at doing anything is she because I think before <laughs> I th that's harsh I think before she starts this career though she got fired for she's selling lingerie lingerie yeah she got fired because she was bad at that too so the only reason she's this seems like a really random career to rock up on but her sleazy cousin Vinny sleazy, has, sleazy cousin Vinny has a bail bonds agency and is essentially press ganged into letting her work there forever regrets many regrets on both sides so many regrets <laughs> so i've talked about this one quite a lot as well on my channel we love this series i'm going to be perfectly straight up and say it's slapstick comedy yeah. that's exactly what it is it's slapstick comedy on the page of where you kind of know it's a bit formulaic and it's going to go Rude. no it's the cast of characters that keeps us coming back yes. for these novels. Sometimes the plots are a little bit convoluted and sometimes I forget who people are yeah. because there are many people, many people. But I love the characters. Have you got a favourite character? Two. Okay. One of which I remember the name of. Woo! <laughs> okay. I don't remember names, so that was a rarity. <laughs> Who's your favourite then? One of them is Lola. Lola. So Lola is a very, very plus size African American lady who used to be, as she refers to herself, a hooker. I'm gonna just say right here that these books, the, the series did start in the 90s. There's now like 21 of these. They are very 90s. So there is a lot of language in them where I think, ooh, girl, mm, maybe I don't want to say that. We've just finished 40 Score, which does include a drag queen and a discussion of gender and a discussion of drag queens and their sexuality. And like my butthole was like, oh, that's so bad. <laughs> but it's okay to like things as long as we acknowledge that they're problematic, right? Yeah. Right. So yeah, so we love this series. This series is great. Who's your other favorite then? Uh, the granny. Grandma Mozart. Oh my oh. goodness. I aspire to be Grandma Mozart. I want to be somewhere between... <laughs> Thanks. I want to be somewhere between Miss Marple, but I'm not smart enough, and Grandma Mozart, sure. but no, no. Where she's like, she doesn't give a crap about anything or what anybody thinks about her. She just, she's a hoodlum. She's just, she can't be trusted with anything and she wants to have fun but i totally want to be there with her all the time like i poor chicken oh 
So the next book that is another series that we enjoy reading. Did my jaw click, did you hear that? Not this time, but I know oh, I do. Oh, so loud. <laughs> and I, I, I think it's quite special, and I've mentioned it quite a lot a on bit. my channel. One or two times. Like, quite a lot, because I like it quite a lot. And that is Moon Called or the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. So this one is urban fantasy, clearly, and it's just so freaking good! <laughs> I love it so much! So this series is about Mercy Thompson who is supernatural but outside of the norm. She's a shifter so she can turn into a coyote but she is also many other things. She is a mechanic, uh, she grew up with werewolves so she's kind of an unofficial member of that community mm. and uh, the person who she bought her garage from is Faye so she's kind of got ties to that community as well. There are a lot of tropey um, things in here like uh, there are a lot of vampire tropes and quite a few werewolf tropes but I like the way that they're done. And there's some unusual things as well. Yeah, there definitely are. It's very feminist, very progressive for an urban fantasy series. So in this first one, Mercy comes home to her trailer to find her cat on her front doorstep with a note attached to it saying that if it comes onto her neighbour's property, who is Adam, who is the head werewolf of the pack in her area, if it comes onto his property again, he will eat it and <laughs> I was in love I was in love instantly like that just that was all you needed to do to oh, get I me. love what she does by putting her wrecked vehicle like in his line of sight in yes. her property but he can see it just yes. to annoy him the next one is a natural history of dragons lovely illustrations yes beautiful illustrations they're beautiful books they are hardbacks oh, and gorgeous oh, books as well. what are they called deckled edges they're really nice <laughs> I like them uh, this is about Lady Trent and it is written as a memoir from her as a young girl she was fascinated by the idea of dragons and in their world they have um, kind of mini dragons called sparklings I think sparklings right. well done and when these were found dead or whatever she would like pull them apart and find out how they work we're trying to find out how they work she's fascinated so not at all you as a child no. <laughs> nothing like me <laughs> okay I'll, i'm having a, a moment <laughs> <laughs> you're triggered you're triggered yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she <laughs> i'll take over okay she examines these sprites and her father who is just as much of a society hating asshole as she is gives her books about dragons and it's definitely not the place of women to be a naturalist in this society. I try and describe these books to people as Jane Austen with dragons. Lady Trent is essentially Lizzie Bennet. She likes books, she likes studies, she dislikes people and <laughs> over the... <laughs> yeah. She goes on her first expedition in this book um, because she has found a husband in society who actually supports her. Yay! And she goes on an expedition and really bad things happen. And uh, But there are dragons and the dragons are cool. What more could you want? <laughs> what more could they be really? <laughs> There's no Darcy equivalent so maybe that. Just uh -uh. And they give me fun times trying to pronounce some of the places and names. Thanks Marie Brennan. Okay so the next book, that we, did you hear that one? I thought that was a chair. Oh, that was your jaw. Me. me. So the next book that we have is another one which may come as a bit of a surprise to you at first until you realise that that author is one of my favourite authors and she mostly writes stabby books and it turns out that this one's not very stabby at all. But it's super great, it isn't is. it? Yep. So this one is What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty. And this one is, is very sort of... It's very just contemporary novel -y. I mean, there is a mystery in it. There's a mystery in all of Leanne Moriarty's novels, but this one is much more family focused, I think, than the rest. So this one is about Alice, and one day Alice is at the gym and she is on the treadmill and she doesn't know how or why, but she slips and falls and she bangs her head. And when she wakes up, she's pretty convinced that she's fine. And everybody else is like, oh, okay, that's great, are you sure? Alright, we'll just leave you to it then. And then, then she sees herself in a mirror and she realises she's not alright because uh, she has lost 
20 years, 10 years, quite a lot, 10, 10 years of her life. She thinks that she is in her late 20s, I yep. think, that she's pregnant with her first baby, that she has a loving relationship with her partner and with her sister. And in fact, she's in her 40s, she has a couple of kids, she's divorced and her sister hates them. That's what happened in those last 10 years? <laughs> That's a good it summer. all went to shit. <laughs> yeah, it just... <laughs> she is trying to figure out... How she got from there to there. Yeah, and there are lots of clues in between though, aren't there? I really... I want to read this again really soon. I really like this. Can we I'll read this that. one again soon? Sure we can. 497 pages, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's many. Many pages, but I it didn't feel like that no. when we were reading it. Unlike Unsticky, kind of felt like 500 pages, I think, partially because it was our first novel, but we still were like. So, you're agreeing it's our first novel? There are so many domestic violence moments in this video. Somebody's just going to put a meme of them all together of me just being like. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Dotty. Well done. Uh, is about um, Caitlin herself. Yeah, it's a memoir. It's yep. non-fiction. We should preface it by saying that. It's non-fiction. Although some of the things that happen in this you'd hardly believe. Oh, you would hope that they were fiction, oh. but they're not. No. Um, she went to college, didn't particularly enjoy college, was interested in... Like dead things. De yeah, dead Liked things. Like dead things. Mostly dead people. Yeah. Like them. Lots. But in a not creepy way? Is there a non creepy way? She ends up going and working in a crematorium interesting learning curve there um, and then doing her degree in, in crematory science I think it actually something like that. is uh, and then that kind of linked into all the different ways that we treat bodies yeah and eventually she becomes a mortician and then apparently we don't treat bodies very well quite often <laughs> no it was hilarious wasn't it yes. so I was reading this aloud to Helen and we were coming back from the fireworks with my mum and I was like, do you mind if I just carry on with this book that we're reading? And she was like, no, no, on you go. And she was fascinated and horrified. <laughs> like, why are you reading this? And we're like, but all the dead things. <laughs> she's, uh, Caitlin's so funny so though. Funny. She's so incisive. She, uh, she brings up things that I had just never thought to yeah, think about. It makes you think about stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And we've definitely thought about what happens after because we don't have kids. So we've definitely considered, you know, like the donation to science things. And it's made us have really like big serious big conversations yeah. about what we wanted. And I, then I, I say to my mum, like, have you had this big serious conversation? She's like, shh, I'm going to live forever. So the next book that we have got kind of ripped our hearts out and threw it on the ground and yep, d mashed it like that, mm. like that. Do it again. Yep, that was, that's pretty accurate. And that is Orbiting Jupiter by Gar Gary D. Schmidt. I knew, I had practiced it in my head and I'm like, I'm going to forget the initial, I'm going to forget the initial. So this one is alternatively marked as middle grade or young adult depending on where you go to get it but I would I would definitely say it's a young adult novel but with a slightly younger protagonist. This is about Jack and his family and his family live on a pretty rural farm they have a lot of room and they want to take in a foster kid so they take on Joseph and Joseph is an extremely troubled young man and throughout the sort of very early parts of this book we discover that Joseph has a young baby out there somewhere called Jupiter and Joseph is I think he's only I think he's like 15 or 16 or something yeah, like that 16, I don't think. Yeah. yeah and he hasn't had a choice in the fact that he's separated from his daughter and that doesn't get to see her so it's really hard hitting there are some serious there are consent issues discussed in here age issues, when it's appropriate to make decisions for other people and uh, you know all of that is discussed in here but this is a tiny freaking book like mm. it it's all just and I mean it's not it's not tiny font or anything it's it's a tiny book but it takes you on a journey we couldn't put this one down I remember that we were just racing to go to bed early like how early can we put the dogs in bed <laughs> so that we can read this book it's just it's so good but the ending though so disappointing 
I think he was trying to make a point about the idea of like young people and mental health and things like that. So I think that was what he was trying to make a point about. But yeah, I, I wish option. I wish it hadn't happened. Yeah, it was it, yeah it was the easy option for the writer, but definitely not the easy option for us. So we just pretend that the last twenty pages didn't happen. Yeah, and that the the uh, happy that happy things happened. Yes, happy things would be nice. I feel like we should insert a drum roll. <laughs> Our favourite book, well, Helen's definite, absolute, your favouritest book of our red alouds. Of our red alouds. Yeah. And maybe one of your favouritest books of all time? Yes. Yep. Yes. Is. Address Unknown by Cressman Taylor. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I'm rubbish at names. <laughs> That's hard. That wasn't take three. It was take two, though. Um, it is a series of letters between Max and Martin. Uh, who owned an art gallery to, or own an art gallery together um, and it's set as Hitler's coming to power in Germany and Martin is originally German and goes from America to Germany to get his children educated uh, as, as in Europe. Euro yeah, as, as young European gentlemen. Um, and Max stays in America looking after the art gallery and it's their letters going backwards and forwards. Martin becomes sort of press ganged a little bit into Hitler's movement and Max starts to notice a change and then bad things happen and it is the progression of their relationship up until sort of mid-World War II I would say probably. Maybe, yeah. I love epistolary novels, I love novels that are written entirely in letters but man, that this it's a hard little book. It really is. So it's tiny, but it's I mean, we read this in one go, we couldn't stop. No. We I, just kept reading into, into the night. With yeah, this I remember what I felt like at work the next day because not only was I tired, but I was emotionally distraught. So it's it's less than a hundred pages and it's it's some of the most impactful pages I've ever read. Well we finished reading it and we were just quiet for about like fifteen minutes. We just couldn't do anything. Yeah, because there's, there is a point towards the end where you're like, what the hell is happening? And the ending just comes from nowhere. It's so and it's powerful. It, it, and painful. It's mm -hmm. so painful, but it's such a good These are our top eight favourite read aloud books. Would have been ten if we could have stopped arguing on the last two. But as eight, as eight, we love all of these books yeah. like really really intensely and we would definitely recommend all of them yep. so if as always you have read any of these books please let me know in the comments if you would like any more uh, persuasion to read any of our favorite series let me know because i can direct you to lots of videos where i talk about them and if you've enjoyed seeing helen let let us know in the comments because you know she may she may turn up in the future again she lives with me she <laughs> mine. She mine. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you gonna help me put them away? No, you know where they go. I'll do it wrong, so I don't have to do it. Yes. See, this is this is the plan. If she does things wrong often enough, I don't ask her to do them anymore. It's working. You might not see her again. You might not.